Hi, Tiny Hands Big Dreams. This is the Maracuya project. So we love Maracuya, otherwise known as passion fruit. Um, they, they come in roundy, uh, weird pod things. Cut them open, um, process the pulp off the seeds, turn it into uh, juice, condense it to syrup, add a little bit of sugar. We add that to carbonated water. It makes the most delicious syrup. Uh, you could imagine we, we drink it all the time. We eat a ton of it. So this is why we do what we do. I take the maracuya and I make this lovely syrup, can it up, and then we can put it in sparkling water for a really delightful, refreshing beverage here in the jungle. It's not all the, the garbage that's in soda and everybody loves it. Now, this is a, the lesser common variety. The other ones are a, a speckled red, um, which you see more often. So when you get inside one of these, you see is that. Now there's a, t a bunch of little seeds and there's a ton of juice in here as you can see is leaking out. They are a bit bitter in their natural state. They're not they're not super sweet. Um, they need they need sugar added. You can kind of see that. So we take these Elizabeth takes these, um, I don't do it, and she puts them in the, the food processor and she, she runs them around for a while to separate the, the juice from the seeds. So rather than buy it, which we've been doing, we decided to grow it. Um, pretty much any fruit or vegetable you buy, um, or at least fruits, it comes with a seed. We simply took the seeds, we propagate. I now have um, a huge area here of maracuya. We decided to do um, a system of pots and integrated fences uh, to allow the fowl um, to, to continue to walk through this area. I could have fenced the whole area, but then I have to, it, it's more difficult to keep the weeds down. Um, you know, you have to keep the animals out. So it, it's a little bit different. We made these pots. Um, now fabric pots exist, you can go and buy them. They have their downsides. They're, they're difficult to pick up. They're kind of floppy. They have bottoms. These are bottomless. So what we've done is we've taken um, this, this plastic mesh, we've wrapped it around, I've taken landscape fabric, we've put it inside the sides, but not the bottom. So we set the thing in place and we fill it. Now, technically, if I were to just lift this up, it would just, the soil would fall and it would collapse. But what I've done is I have made tiny raised beds and we've mixed it heavy with sand um, and a little bit of good soil we found. And the plants have really responded to it. They, they really like um, the high sand mixture. They do that because, uh, as reading about it, they have issues with root rot. They don't like standing moisture. While we're on a hill, we have very heavy clay soil. Not a problem. Many raised beds everywhere. And they, they really seem to be uh, uh, doing, doing well. They're, they're just, they're growing uh, at this point, several inches a day, and they continue to increase every day. So we'll do uh, a little bit of uh, uh, making the pots. Um, it's not that hard. It's not that expensive. And once you do, they, they should last a long time. And that's a, a fun project. It did work for other kinds of things, but um, the end goal is the plant vines up. Um, this is enough to protect it from, from the, the fowl. Um, we're going to have a high trellis that we can walk under. We're going to drop a string down from the trellis that they will go up, and then they can they can branch out wherever they want and create an entire uh, beautiful shaded area here. So that is the uh, the plan and the project. Um, let me let me show you some of the some of the little bits that go with it. We'll get you a close up of just what this plant looks like. It is a vine, and they throw out these tendrils that will reach out and wrap around. Here we go, here's another one. The tendril comes up and hangs on, and if they don't get something to hang on to, they just sort of coil up. If you've ever had 
an old phone that has one of these like curly cords. They're very much the same. So we did a video on the strawberry pots. Um, we'll link that below. They do they do really well. Um, there's good structure. There's great airflow. There's a really good drainage. It's uh, the best of all worlds, and they're really cheap to make if you have the the materials um, and a little bit of time. The only tools needed uh, are a pair of, of scissors. This is landscaping fabric. Um, uh, these are metal snips, and they do real well for cutting the, the plastic mesh. Uh, they zip through it real nice. Some string tape measure. And I use heat to pop little holes through the landscaping fabric. Now we're using this for the maracuya. Um, the maracuya need a taller section because of fowl. Uh, we have free range birds. Um, a lot of people will keep chickens, fowl in a contained environment to give them all of their food. It's, it's a way. Um, another way is to let them out. But there's downsides to everything. Everything's a trade-off. So the trade-off for letting them out is one, they, they bugs from all over the property, we pay much less for food. And they're healthier, I think. It's more natural, they get all sorts of vitamins and minerals. Um, but the downside is they will eat anything that's around, including the plants you're trying to grow. So everything has to be protected inside of a garden. Um, now the large garden where we have a large fence, uh, the bugs simply hang out like an island and the birds will patrol around it, but the grasshoppers inside, they, they have no access to. So the Maracuya project is distributed pots. The birds wander around it on a many times a day basis. We have no bugs. A um, little more work on the front end, less work, better results on the back end. Um, but I get really good growth rates with the, the high aeration pots. So let me show you how to put one together real quick. Um, and then we can go back to the, the Maracuya project. So I take a, this is just a, a big nail. Nothing fancy. I'm going to warm it up. It doesn't need to be red hot. I mean, this is just a colleague's girlfriend fiber, maybe. Fifteen seconds, usually sufficient for the nail. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just touching the head every couple of inches. Now I'm going to weave this fabric. You don't have to be super accurate with this. It doesn't need measured and marked out and um, high precision anything. It's just to hold it to the screen so that we can fill it with dirt and it holds it up, keeps it, keeps it nice looking. Much more heat. Okay. So I've made that. You can see my lovely holes. Always use a piece of scrap wood for protection. Now I'm just going to lay this on. Set it so it just overhangs the bottom. And I'm going to string it on.
Okay. So I'll stop here after I've got the bottom stitched up. And then what I'm going to do is cut myself access. So I'm going to come to this side and I'm going to cut a few of these. Two, three, four, five, six. So now in the pot is on the ground, I can come and open it without too much problem. And get in, uh, pull weeds, uh, make it do amendments, whatever else. This um, goes back down, and then I will take the string and I will continue to weave it up uh, once it's in place. And now it's just a temporary just to hold it. So that's good enough uh, to fill with dirt. Once you fill it with dirt, the fabric will be nicely contained. Um, the dirt itself pushes the, the fabric out. And the string holds it up pretty well. We tried staples. Don't use staples. It didn't work. <laughs> it just fall apart. I had to go pick up all the staples. Um, these are bottomless. So with some things in life, bottoms are great. With other things, um, bottomless margaritas, bottomless cheese fries, bottomless pot. Uh, the roots have nothing to stop them. The normal pot hits the, the bottom, that's it. With tap roots, it's a big problem. So the whole point of the bottomless pot is it is merely a raised bed. Set it on the soil, it has all of this lovely amended soil. And then it can extend out and actually root into the ground. And if it wants to put a big giant root down, go ahead. So I have not limited um, the plant at all. These these are supposed to be a very large root system. But it'll, you know, the dirt itself will hold these. This protects it from the birds. Um, it'll climb up the string in the center. This is essentially what we do for Maracuya pot. Cost to produce. Um... Ooh, around a dollar for the, the piece of mesh, but in a, a big section we cut it up. Pennies for the, the string and the landscaping fabric. And just some time. Um, but so far they're doing really well. We gave them a, a, a sandy mix, about 50% sand, and they really love it. Um, holds a ton of water, but also doesn't super saturate. So that is the detail of the maracuya pot. Okay. Just a little update here. I'm still here peeling some of the pieces of wood that I'm going to use for the maracuya project. That's what it's looking like to date. Let me walk over and give you some close-ups of what we're doing. Some maracuyas growing pretty solid. Here we've taken the posts, burned them, soaked them in a bit of boric, um, and sunk them into the earth, and we've pounded the earth around them. So they're actually quite solid. Peeled, uh, burned, and boric soaked on the, the inner sections, which is where you tend to get rot. I am actually going to run the, the torch over the whole piece. We'll get you a close-up here of the attachment method. So I've taken a nail and a piece of wire. Wrap it over the top and around to this side. That'll focus. And then I crank on this side full tension. Now the joint is just chainsaw curve. Um, I'll cut a V and then I'll lay it up there and just dig it in with the chainsaw until it sort of fits. So in this piece I did it a little different um, because I didn't want to kill said tree. Um, I kind of like the thing. So I can use it for support but I have to sort of 
gently attached to it. So I've got a crutch here holding my weight. I've got a little piece of a spacer going down the side where I'm going to have my, my end pieces in. I've got some string um, holding it to the tree as a stabilizer. And then down at the bottom, because there's roots here, what I've done is I've put a couple of pieces of rebar down into the ground. I've put a piece of cement block just to, to space the pole up an inch. And then I poured a little bit of concrete. And this will make like a tooth that sits on the surface and has just enough of a, the rebar getting down into the ground to, to hold it, to keep the bottom from shifting around. So by doing this, I'm able to, to not cut down the tree and, and keep it as, as part of the program. A little extra work, but I don't know, makes me happy. We got all the the upper posties, um, the laterals, the sides. I got everything. I just did notches in the posts, and then I, I wired it. It just has to hold itself up there until I get the string on, and the string will then pull the whole thing into tension. I really sort of hold it up there. The maracuja is it's looking for somewhere to go. we got to get some string hanging for it pretty soon. And these are all... Everything we used here uh, was cast-offs, odd size, had some sort of blemish, not straight. Um, you know, this is just what you could do with your extras that are less than perfect. Uh, you can see everything is burned. Um, I've given everything a, a lovely coat of carbon. Burn the outside of it. You, you sacrifice a little bit in order to preserve it for a longer time. And then we gave it a, a spritz of uh, boric acid, which just helps keeps the bugs out and keeps things from growing on it. Should last quite a bit. Well, there it is. Let's see what it looks like in uh, in the next shot. So it's been a few more weeks. Um, the Miracuya has grown quite a bit, uh, which is really impressive. We've had very little sun. I think in the last several weeks, we have had on average of an hour or two hours of sun a day. Um, they're one of the more successful things we have going. So we finished the, the, the trellis strings. Um, these are all in tension, which holds my, my sidebars into the notches that I've cut. Um, we go past the tree, our support here, everything is, is solid. So these should hold a lot of weight as everything grows up um, and they will just dance all across the strings and probably a year from now is when we'll get uh, uh, our own maracuyas.